Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it, and I update daily. If you like this watch, you can purchase it on thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches 24 hours a day and globally on thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a short-lived great, the 2001-2004 to IWC GST Perpetual Calendar Chronograph. This is reference 3756-01 Titanium. Of course, the GST collection available in gold, steel, and titanium. This 43mm all-arounder is titanium, the most versatile of the metals and perhaps next to gold, the most distinctive as the matte finish of the watch is simply sensational and it has a no-nonsense, pure utility aesthetic with a small amount of industrial design new that one might consider a signature of the old pre-Georges Kern IWC. Now this watch was already on the drawing board and the design was finished by the time King George arrived and you can see that it's really a throwback to 90s IWC. So 43 millimeters across the case because bigger is more visible, not because bigger is better. The watch is reasonably slim for what it is, 16.3 millimeters thick. It has a little bit of a cantilever to the bezel such that you're probably not gonna wear it underneath a dress sleeve, but it should be okay with a jacket. Now, if you measure end link to end link, you're gonna find the rigid span across the wrist is a substantial, but not insurmountable, 53.8 millimeters. I find on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, it wears just fine and I would probably recommend it for wrists 14 and a half centimeters in circumference and up. Of course, because it's titanium, it's hypoallergenic and feather light on the wrist. In terms of mass, it feels more like a 40 millimeter steel watch on a full bracelet. Let's give ourselves a little bit more light now that you've seen the watch. I'll do one last quick wrist shot so you get a good sense of its stance on a smaller wrist. It's an easy watch to wear. It's handsome. Its profile is resolutely the product of an engineering vision. And you can see that continues on the bracelet itself. It's all of a matte finish. So a very subtle sheen. You can see it glows rather than explodes. It's not polished, it's not satin, it's matte or blasted. A simple design, a little bit like a Patek Nautilus with the primary links and then these smaller intermediate links. What really sets this apart from the Nautilus is that even in 1998 when the GST collection bowed, this bracelet was beyond anything Patek 2018 offers. You press the dimple at the center of the intermediate link and the retaining lateral bars can be removed. And yes, you're reading this correctly. Every individual link can be removed using this modular quick release system. You can actually break a toothpick into two pieces and take the entire bracelet apart. It's that user friendly. Now you will note that it features a clasp in matching matte tie and a low profile, though it does have a trigger release system, so it's not friction fit. It can simply pop open because it's not as thick as a dive clasp. It's also not as susceptible to desk diving scratches. Now moving back to the case, you can see there's a little bit of a Gerald Genta inspired bolt profile outboard. This was drawn from some of the prior Ingenieur references which informed the GST collection and you will note that this watch features its period correct original IWC fish crown. The timepiece has a no-nonsense dial. We'll talk a bit more about the dial's luminescence when the loom shot arrives at the end of the video. For now let's get close, let's zoom in, get our focus, and talk about what's thrown up on offer by IWC's designers. You can see that it's a no-nonsense dial, cruciform symmetry, moon phase perpetual calendar chronograph, and a combination of high contrast white and high contrast yellow on matte black base. There is an AR coating on the underside of the crystal, and the dial itself is matte so that it can better absorb the sun's rays and resist reflection. Oversized baton style hands are robustly luminescent and offer almost an exaggerated interpretation of high contrast, although you will note the elegance of certain details, such as the long counterweighted lancet style seconds hand and the use of a true aventurine moon phase disc at 12 o'clock with a gorgeous series of copper deposits in a melted blue glass sky, absolutely sensational. Now you will note a series of doubled up registers that pull double duty. At three o'clock, you can see that there is a radial date, and then you can see that there is a combination of a chronograph hour indicator and a radial month at six o'clock. There is a remarkably comprehensive year, decade, century, and millennium, and then there's constant seconds as well as a day of the week indicator at nine, and the moon phase doubles as chronograph minutes. 
Now, all of this is controlled via the crown. There are no pusher adjusters, there are no additional through fittings, because this uses the Kurt Claus mechanically programmed and fully coordinated perpetual calendar system, which is to say you don't need to look up all of the indications of the calendar, day, date, month, moon phase. You simply put the crown in its setting position, and then everything moves in sync. You simply turn to the day's date, and it's as simple as setting a Rolex Datejust. You'll even note that the moon phase itself moves in sync. Now all of this is protected to 120 meters by a screw down crown and a screwed in case back. There's nothing to see on the case back. It's old school, solid and secure. What I will say, however, is that what's inside is mostly IWC manufacture watchmaking. The mechanically programmed sequential perpetual calendar system by their watchmaking maestro, and I guess at this point he's watchmaker emeritus at IWC, Kurt Claus, that's all them. Now, at this time, back in the early 2000s, IWC would receive a knockdown kit or an Abausch version of the 7750. They'd provide their own train, power source, regulator, balance, escapement, and then they would regulate it themselves in multiple positions. What was delivered was effectively a chronometer grade Abausch, in as much as the Abausch parts could be used to foster a chronometer grade of precision, but all of the small parts and the final regulation, the critical stuff, was installed by IWC from their own suppliers. And this is why I consider this to be principally an IWC movement. It's the reference 79261 automatic unidirectional winding, 44 hour power reserve, 28,800 vibrations per hour, so it's a standard 4 hertz beat rate. An absolutely sensational piece with 39 joules, massively modified, I consider this an in-house caliber. You can see and you can purchase this sensational GST Perpetual Calendar Chronograph, a four-year model long since discontinued on our website. And I'm back with the IWC GST Perpetual Calendar Chrono. As you can see, easy to read by day, easy to read by night. A deluxe, fully loomed dial. Even the sub-registers have luminescent hands. See it by the light of day on the watch box.